Happy Wednesday, um, known as uh, Hump Day. I uh, hope you have had a, a wonderful, blessed beginning of the week and uh, that as uh, this week goes on, uh, you just uh, have an opportunity to um, grow in your faith, to uh, allow God to work and to see his hand no matter what is going on around you. I will uh, follow up uh, this midweek's devotion from our sermon on Sunday out of Hebrews chapter 7 um, and got some, some positive feedback in, in, in regards to it's a, a difficult chapter in, in the initial read of it. It's, uh, uh, I'm not going to read all of that. I encourage you to, to uh, get into your Bible and, and to, to read and, and follow along. But it's talking about um, the character we've only heard of twice before in all of Scripture, and both times in the, in the Old Testament, and that is uh, Melchizedek. And, and what we learned is that Melchizedek is, is, uh, was appointed by God as both priest and king, and only Melchizedek and Jesus himself um, are allowed or do have those two titles. But I want to just point out why that chapter, why that understanding, why that comparison to Melchizedek is truly vital for us to understand him, more importantly, that role as priest and king, and how it relates to Jesus Christ. Uh, I do want to just read just a little bit out of Hebrews 7, verses 15 to 19. It says this, and what we have said is even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears, one who has become a priest not on the basis of a regulation as to his ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. For it is declared, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect, and a better hope is introduced by which we are drawn near to God. The whole focus of this and the importance for us today is understand Christ's role as our high priest. That, that role of the priest was to intercede um, before God to his children. Um, and Jesus Christ is the perfect, the only perfect sacrifice that was made um, to take care of our sin for all of our sin on the cross. And we do know that we are sinners. Uh, there's, we are, because of sin, totally depraved, set apart from God, and it is only through the sacrifice of the high priest, in this case Christ, that, that our sin was taken care of. Uh, and because of sin, we deserve death, Scripture says. I truly believe this understanding of sin is, has always, throughout history, obviously played a big role in what happens in mankind. But we see it more so in our culture today. I think we are seeing a time, just as the Israelites did at the end of Joshua's time, that the Israelites, everyone did, what they saw was best in their own eyes. They did what they thought what they could do, what they wanted to do. It was a, a selfish heart and attitude. And I think we're seeing that in a, in a real way in our culture and our world today, this idea of this, this narcissistic attitude that me first, I'm going to take care of myself. And some of it is because I have been hurt by others Therefore, I'm going to protect myself, and it's going to be my way. I'm not going to take no for an answer. We also are seeing that in, in the breakdown in the family. As I wrote a few years ago now in, in my book, a uh, section on most nations fall, have fallen simply because of the breakdown in the family, and we have definitely seen that in our own nation. But I think we've even raised that to a another level of depravity or sinfulness, if you will. This whole idea of this identity crisis that, that we are having and or promoting. You see, it is inevitable that sin will reveal itself and entice us to reject God's design for us and, and His desire for our lives. Sin does, has, will create conflict and chaos within ourselves and we will and have lost sight of who we are 
and who we belong to. In our culture, we're seeing this whole idea of gender-inclusive language or gender identity or even now heritage identity. At the core of these, it is simply a desire, a sinful desire, to have something other than what we already have received or have become and who God created us to be. And this identity crisis is trying to create something that who we haven't been created to be. But we know from the very beginning in Genesis 1, on the sixth day, God created man and woman. That's how vital, that's important our identity is. We are created in God's image. As human beings, we find ourselves confronting this individual identity crisis. And we've seen it throughout the years in various stages, but not to the purpose of this time of who am I or what's my purpose, what's my value. Identity crisis is something that all folks, everyone, all sinners struggle with. We are all prone to sin, which is the opposite of God's plan for us. And God's word communicates very clearly that we are his masterpiece. We are created in his image. There is something special about us because of who he is as our creator. We have not been created in his image to be like God or to make the choices of who we are. We trust that he created us to be the best we can be, and he does want the best for us. It's important for us to understand that our sin is not our identity unless you choose it to be. That's quite honestly why Christ came. That's why he was this perfect high priest. That's why we need him to intercede on our behalf. It is only in Christ it is our sin and our past forgiven. The, the mistakes, the wrongful intentions, the hatred, the evil, the terrible, all of that is erased when we put our faith and trust in Christ and His finished work as our high priest. You are given a chance to start over, to start new. You are become a new creation in Christ. You, you, you can make right, things right. The, you can fix the broken relationships. You can heal the people around you and you can be healed because of who Christ is. And you think about it, why would we want to be someone different from that masterpiece God created us to be? It is only through Christ that we are reminded in our brokenness, in our guilt, in our pain, in our shame, in our regret, that we are loved. We are special. We are forgiven. We are healed. And ultimately, our identity in Christ enables us to reflect on the origin of God's design for all human beings as the root of the system that we live in and we walk through and we find joy and peace and happiness. You see, it is through Christ that, that we are not ever too broken beyond repair. Christ is wanting to meet us where we are and bring us into his presence where there is hope and there's peace and there's no longer shame and guilt and hurt and pain that he can cover through his shed blood. That's not to say that your sin is irrelevant because all sin falls short of the glory of God, but it is to say that it has been taken care of. It is finished on the cross. You see, you fulfill your identity and become a new creation in his creation, his perfect masterpiece. My hope and my prayer is that we will focus on who Jesus is and his finished work, because no matter what is going on in your life, Jesus is enough. He is greater than anything that you are struggling with right now. Pray with me, Father, you are an amazing God. I do pray that you would heal you, would bring people back to you, that we would find our identity in Christ, that we have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer us who live, but Christ lives in us, Father. You work in a mighty way for Christ to be known as our identity. We have nothing to prove. It's only to receive what you have so richly blessed us with. I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Pray that you have a blessed week and look forward to seeing you again. God bless.